the Lord. He heard my my cry and pitied and regret.
so blessed this morning to have the St. John's Church of Christ Mass Choir. You can keep playing. Join us here and help lead us in worship this morning. So I'm going to say to you, I found myself singing along on that last song. That was just wonderful. And uh, as, the, as the Spirit moves you, clap. As the Spirit moves you, stand up. As the Spirit moves you, sing along, because this is just wonderful. They're going to do three more songs for us, so enjoy and get involved.
your heart is in despair, remember God, He cares. And when you're in doubt and you can't find your way out, He will see you through. Yes, He will. Just go. Just hold. 
Is there any place on the planet you would rather be than right here, right now? Yeah. Our God is able. Our God is able to break down the barriers that all too arbitrarily divide us. Our God is able to bring healing everywhere we hurt. God is able to reconcile enemies into friends. God is able to walk us through whatever we're going through. God is able to do far abundantly more than we could ever ask or imagine. What a wonderful day to be alive. Is your heart as full as mine? I'm overwhelmed. When the Holy Spirit shows up, barriers are overcome. When the Holy Spirit shows up, our spirits are lifted. When the Holy Spirit shows up, we're able to see from a different perspective. When the Holy Spirit shows up, there's joy, there is peace, there is wholeness, there's reconciliation, there is love, there is friendship, there is brotherhood and sisterhood. We are the family of God. Heaven is looking upon us right now and smiling. The angels of heaven are rejoicing. Can you see it? <laughs> Jesus came announcing in word and deed the kingdom of God. This is what he came announcing. This is what he came inviting us into. Did you see the movement that took place when St. John's first started singing, we were in awe. And for the most part, we were receiving it. And as time went on, we were being drawn into it. Did, could you feel that? And it was no longer St. John's and those who were just experiencing it. We were drawn in and we were a part of it. That is the beauty of the kingdom of God. That is the beauty of the beloved community. And we are glimpsing this morning the eternal reign of God on earth as it is in heaven. This is just but a step, is it not? We have so much work to do. I want to thank St. John's, all of you. This is, hey, I'm doubly blessed this week. I was at the community college this past Monday, and I was so overwhelmed I could hardly get up to speak. I was the keynote speaker, and I was so moved. It took me 10 minutes to figure out what I was supposed to say. And if you can believe this, I had a manuscript that I couldn't even follow. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being here. We have been drawn together this morning by the Spirit of God. We are here by divine appointment. The people we were when we walked in will not be the people we are when we walk from this place. God can transform our lives and has already transformed our lives. God has been active since creation, since that fall, restoring all that was lost. How many of you know that restoration has taken place this morning? God is changing each one of us personally. God is transforming us collectively. This morning, we are the church that Jesus came and taught and lived and sacrificed and died. And his resurrection assures us that the church will endure forever. We serve God who is the creator of all that is, the transcendent one. The one who speaks the very words and it is so and it is good. I believe God spoke this gathering into existence. And each and every one of us knows it is good. It is good to be here. God smiles upon our gathering, and in the midst of this joy, we know that each and every person is going through something personally in our lives. Each one of us has a challenge that we're going through. There are several common denominators of us all. Number one, we are all children of God. Who is a child of God? Everyone. Who is a child of God? Everyone. Thank you, Jesus. 
Everyone is a child of God. Each and every one of us has infinite worth in the eyes of God. We are all equal in the eyes of God. We have all been lifted to our proper status. As God's children, we have infinite worth and dignity, every one of us. When we look upon one another, we look upon one another as brothers and sisters. We have one father, one creator, one mother, the one who created us all out of one blood, all of humanity. And while collectively we are all children of God, each and every one of us particularly is a child of God. We have our concerns and God knows our concerns better than we do. God knows our anxieties and our worries better than we do. God knows our hopes and our dreams and our aspirations better than we do. God knows what's going on with our loved ones better than we do. How liberating is that? There's no greater pain than suffering because a loved one is suffering. But what's so liberating about that, as much as we love our loved ones, God loves our loved ones even more than we do. Our loved ones are in God's hands. There's nothing that we can go through that God can't fix. And if it's not fixed in this world, God will walk us all the way to the grave with the assurance that we will rise again. That's not a platitude, is it? That's not just preacher speak. That is our hope, and our hope is rooted in our faith, and our faith is rooted in God, and God is the ultimate reality. And God is the source of our wholeness, our peace, our forgiveness, our all in all. So with that in mind, let's go to God in prayer together. Gracious and loving God, we are so very grateful to be in this place at this time. We encounter you in so many ways. We encounter you when we visit a loved one. We encounter you when we hear the voice of a child. We encounter you in the smile and in the eyes of another. We encounter you as we see the sun come up and as we see the sun set. We encounter you in the beauty of your creation. There's something special about when we gather as your people we gather united by your love, when we gather united in our grace-filled recognition that you love each and every one of us, we thank you for the one who reveals your love, the one who is willing to do anything to reveal your love. Help us to worship you in the way you love best. Help us to surrender our wills to your will. Help our lives to bear witness to the love we've received from you. We thank you for the joy that we've celebrated this morning. Our hearts are filled and overflowing. We know that we've been transformed and we will continue to be transformed. Help us to be a transforming agent in Washington, North Carolina, and beyond. Help us to be people of true peace, not just the absence of conflict, but the presence of justice and equality and freedom. Help us continue to enter into trusting relationships. Help us to draw close to one another, not just on occasion, but regularly. We pray, oh Jesus, that you, the Christ, the light of the world, will shine in our dark places. Help us to see any hindrances that would prevent your kingdom from coming on earth as it is in heaven. Fill our hearts with hope where we are concerned or hopeless. Fill our hearts with peace when we get overwhelmed by the day-to-day -day vicissitudes of life. Fill our hearts with joy not for all circumstances, but in all circumstances, realizing that you have overcome all, that in this world we will have trouble, but Jesus, you have reminded us to take heart as you have overcome the world. We celebrate the reality that we are overcomers. We thank you for the, by the power of your Holy Spirit. There is nothing we cannot overcome. We thank you that the same spirit that indwelled Jesus indwells us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. 
Jesus, you are welcome here this morning. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here this morning. God, our Father, our Creator, our all in all, you are welcome here this morning. We invite you into this worship service. We invite you into our hearts and our spirits and our minds. We invite you to have your way. We surrender this service to you. It is yours. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In the name that is above all names, the name of the one who taught us so much, including how to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite those who are serving to come forward, please, at this time. Just a couple of words of instruction. I hope and I pray that it goes without saying that everyone is welcome to celebrate communion. Everyone. That is not the invitation of a pastor or preacher. That is not the invitation of a denomination. That is not the invitation of a local church. The invitation to communion is the invitation of Jesus, and Jesus invites all into his loving, welcoming presence. We have a couple of ways that we're able to receive and celebrate communion. Some of you may want to come forward through this aisle, and there will be our elders and deacons will be willing to serve you. You can take a piece of the bread by intention and dip it in the cup. We also have some separate pieces that have been broken from one bread, and there are different pieces and individual cups. If you prefer to receive communion that way, we have some offering baskets in convenient places, and we want to emphasize that we never pay for communion. Jesus paid for us to receive communion. Our offering is simply an expression of our gratitude, the opportunity to participate in our newly created nature If anyone is in Christ Jesus, that person is a new creation. The old things are gone. See, everything has become new. We are children of God. God so loved the world that God gave. Love gives. It's in our very being to give because we are children of God and we are children of love. If you feel so led to share a portion of what God has given you, then you have an opportunity to provide your offering in our offering baskets. And then we also have a prayer station toward the back here. And we remember that Jesus really is the light of the world. Christ, the light of the world, shines in the darkness, and the darkness will never, ever overcome the light. We have a Christ candle. And whatever dark places some of us may be going through, if there's a season of darkness, if we're going through something in our own lives, if a loved one is going through something, then we have an opportunity to light a candle remembering Christ, the light of the world. However you feel so led, there's no particular formula. As you feel so led, you can respond to these offerings as you so desire.
A commitment to soar in 2019. We're off to a great start, <laughs> aren't we? How many of you feel like you took flight this morning? My goodness. The Holy Spirit is present, has lifted us up, and it's just a wonderful thing to behold. I am so glad that we are short on time. If anything, I wish we were shorter on time. I wish we had more of the choir. But they have two other places to stop this morning. And so someone said they need their manager. They, they're going to need a manager pretty soon, and Lord knows they will. And how grateful are we for our Living Water Praise Band week in and week out? <laughs> our worship, our adoration, God loves the various expressions, the outpouring of our hearts and our spirits with joy and love for the God whom we adore, and rightfully so. We're going to, I was kind of teetering, what do you all think? Are we ready, are we ready to do a call and let you all, I'm serious about this, we can, I can offer about a 10, 15 minute message or we can just celebrate and bask in what we've had, which is perfectly okay as well. We can go get some breakfast and 
enjoy one another's company. I don't have a, a heartfelt need to share this, but if someone's wanting to hear a message, I'm happy to offer it too. Offer it. Okay, here we go. They said offer it. Here we go. I'll try to be brief. If I go more than 15 minutes, coach say, what a day. What a day. My goodness. Okay, here we go. Soaring, soaring. We began with S. Sow the seeds that we hope to reap in our lives. Oh, offer our God-given gifts. Ask was A. Ask, which reminds us of our proper place on this planet, proper place in the universe. All that we have is a gift from God, and we ask. It reminds us of our dependence on God. God is the source of all that is good in our lives. And today we're going to talk about release. If we are going to take flight, if we are going to soar, there are some things that we're going to have to release in our lives. We want to soar. We were created to soar. We were created to see things from a godly perspective. We are finite. God is infinite. But God will raise us up to new heights to be able to see things through the power of the Holy Spirit that we could not have seen before. As we cooperate, as an eagle soars, as we cooperate with the elements, as we cooperate with the Spirit of God, we are able to lift to new heights. We are able to accomplish things that we never otherwise would have been able to accomplish. And as we soar, we experience a freedom, a freedom to know the will of God, to know God, to cooperate with the will of God. That freedom is the recognition that we can know God's will and that we have the ability to fulfill God's will. And there's an extraordinary freedom. Jesus was the freest person this world has ever known. He was free to perfectly align his will with the will of God. And not only to align his will with the will of God, he was free. He had the power to carry it out. And when we look at Jesus, we see that power that is available to us, and we begin to see power in the proper perspective. We begin to see power from a godly perspective, that we are able, that we are capable, that we have the capacity to fulfill God's purposes. Now, I want to turn our attention to a couple of the scripture readings that will assist us in recognizing what it is that we need to release if we are to soar in 2019 and beyond. In our faith walk, a great deal of what we are doing is trying to obtain certain things. There are things we want to make a part of our lives. There are things that we reach for and we grasp at. We want more faith. We want more joy. We want more hope. We want more healing. We want more wholeness. We want more peace in the world. These are things that we are striving for. These are the ways that we're trying to rise to new heights and accomplish these things. But in order for us to do that, there are some things that we are going to have to release so let's look at our Hebrews text for just a moment. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, this is familiar to many of us, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. And then Luke chapter 4, beginning in verse 42 and through 43, I want to give just a little bit of context of this for a moment. Luke chapter 4, many of you will recognize, is the chapter where Jesus has been in the wilderness. He has been tempted. He's gotten very clear about what his mission is. He comes back to his hometown to begin with, and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to bind up the brokenhearted, to pray, proclaim liberty to those who are oppressed and to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord where all debts are canceled. And then he begins his ministry going along the countryside. He finds himself in Peter's hometown and he performs some miracles. And after he's performed these miracles, this is what happens the next day. At daybreak, he departed and went into a deserted place and the crowds were looking for him. And when they reached him, they wanted to prevent him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to other cities also. Why? Why was Jesus sent to us? The kingdom of God. The good news is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is Jesus' agenda. The kingdom of God is our agenda. 
The kingdom of God is when we are all one. God's agenda is that we will be one, one people, distinct but inseparable. The agenda of First Christian Church of Washington is that we would be one. That's our one agenda. Why? Because that's Jesus' agenda. So if we are going to soar, one of the things we're going to have to recognize is that we are all in this race. We have been given this opportunity from those who came before us. And we are to take the baton from those who came before us, and we are also putting those who will come after us in a position to take that baton. This race that we are running is one that requires endurance. It's one that requires perseverance. This is not a sprint. This one is one that we are in for the long haul. This is going to take a great deal of endurance. And any time we begin to recognize that we have been enlisted into this race, the race that Jesus ran, the, the race that Jesus passed on to his disciples, and those disciples passed on to their disciples, right on down to us today, we are disciples. And as disciples, we too are enlisted in this race. And so we're going to have to run it with perseverance. One of the things we're going to have to recognize is that, broadly speaking, we are called to let go of the sin, to release, to lay it down, to release that sin. Sin is not one of those fun topics to talk about, is it? And yet it's one of those necessary topics to talk about. What is sin? When we're talking about sin, what do we mean when we're talking about sin? Wrongdoing? Anything that keeps us from God. One definition I often heard, and I qualified it a little bit as I grow in my own spirituality. This is my sense of it, and of course, you're growing in your own spiritual understanding of God. But how many of you have heard of sin as separation from God? But we say every week, neither height nor depth nor things present nor things to come nor angels nor powers nor life, not even death. Nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God revealed in Christ Jesus. So I am qualifying that now. Sin is not that which separates us, but in some ways it injures our relationship. It has an adverse effect on our relationship. It strains relationship. Let's put it that way. Because I don't think we're ever finally separated from God's love. Is there anywhere we can go that God is not there? Is there anything we can do that God is not going to love us through? Can we ever then be separated from God's love? We can be assured of that if we've had the experience. We can be assured of that through Holy Scripture. Paul considered himself the sinner above all sinners. And yet it's his words that says nothing can separate us from the love of God revealed in Christ Jesus. But there are things that will strain our relationship. There are things that strain our relationship with God and with one another. And I don't believe that our strained relationship with God is primarily from God's perspective. In fact, it's not from God's perspective. It's ours. There's something that when we are operating in ways that are contrary to God's will, it is we who shy away from the relationship, not God. One of the greatest impulses and sins that we are tempted to follow through with is that when we do feel a sense of guilt, we want to hide. We want to run in the opposite direction. But it's not about what we feel always, is it? It's about what we know. So when we feel most disconnected because of something maybe even we have done, that's not a time to hide from God. That's a time to run in God's direction, who is always there to receive us, who is always there to welcome us so that our hearts can be assured. If we had time, there's a passage in 1 John chapter 3. I invite you to look to it. About there are times that our hearts convict us. But there's a knowledge of God that surpasses even our feelings. 1 John, the small little epistle toward the back, more of a sermon. I invite you to read it. Read it in its entirety. It's only five chapters. And it is rich, rich, rich. 1 John. But even when our hearts convict us, there's a knowledge that we can have that surpasses even a conviction in our heart. Because we align our convictions with the reality of God. And if we will align our convictions with the reality of God, then even in those temporary moments where we feel somehow estranged, we know better than how we feel. I thank God at this point, and I say this not boastfully, there is, and I mess up daily, just like you do, whether you're aware of it or not. 
But there is never a time, I thank God for this, I don't say this boastfully, I thank God that there is never a moment that I feel like God doesn't love me. And that has nothing to do with me, that has everything to do with God. God does not love me because I'm worthy. I'm worthy because God loves me. God does not love you because you're worthy, you're worthy because God loves you. So in that sense, you are worthy. There's no question about that. And I believe when we get a strong sense of that, then sin no longer has such a tight grip on us. But it's not just sin that we have to lay a hold of. Every weight that would cause us not to be able to run this race. What race are we running? The fulfillment of the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. We all have our role. We all have our leg. We all have our particular part of this race. And sometimes there are weights that aren't inherently sin that we have to lay down. Sometimes there are good things that we emphasize too much of, and that can get in the way. So we're going to have to release some things. Let's get very particular now about what we're going to lay down. In the body of Christ, and I'm going to get to some of the personal for a moment, but it still concerns me that churches are not having the profound witness we could otherwise have to a world that's in desperate need of the good news of the kingdom of God. How many of you would agree that the world is in desperate need of the good news of the kingdom of God? Where there is trust, where there is relationship, where there is embrace, where there is acceptance, where everyone is treated with the dignity and worth that they truly deserve, where everyone is respected, where everyone is appreciated, where everyone is treated as an equal, where everyone receives the justice that they deserve, where everyone is treated as the child of God, they really are. Think about that. That's what the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven means. That's what it means. If that were operative, what a profound influence the church, who is supposed to be a glimpse of the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven, what a witness we would have. But what do you think the world system sees when they see first churches in historical districts? when they see churches that are oftentimes attended by a certain education level or a particular race or a particular stance on a particular issue, what is our witness to the world when we do that? There are some people who think that this message has nothing to do with Christianity, that Christianity is about Jesus coming and dying to save us from our sins, and that is true from our sins of division, from our sins of hate, from our sins of exclusion, from our sins of preoccupation with self, which gets me to this point. If we are going to soar, if we are going to take flight, we're going to have to release our personal preferences, our personal preferences. You would think this would be so small, but it's amazing to me that it's personal preferences within the church that often divides us. Now it's going to get quiet because I'm going to be stepping on everybody's toes. And Beth will say Amen. We have this mission of one. This is going to get quiet. But we have preferences over worship styles. Some of us prefer contemporary. Some of us prefer traditional. Some of us prefer hymns. Some of us prefer an organ. Some of us prefer drums. Some of us prefer a teaching style from a preacher. Some of us prefer intention. Do you think God cares about any of that? What do you think God cares about? How do we worship God? We saw last week that we worship God. I'm off script and maybe that's good. Therefore, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as living sacrifices. Like living sacrifices. This is your spiritual form of worship. This is your reasonable worship. Sometimes it's amazing to me that it's our personal preferences that get in the way of fulfilling the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. If we are going to soar as the body of Christ, we need to be taking more steps to, toward releasing our personal preferences. Can I get an amen from the church if you mean it? If you mean it, say amen. amen. So we are going to soar in 2019 we are going to work those chills are coming because this is the word of God 
We are going to work toward becoming one. This is not a slogan. This is not some campaign just to get attention for church growth. We are fulfilling the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And if we are committed to that, then we need to be committed to releasing our personal preferences, don't we? I am committed to releasing my personal preferences. Jesus says, come what may, I'll do whatever it takes to unite my people. Are we followers of Jesus? He is our Savior. He is our teacher. We're not just believers. We're followers. We are disciples. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, a new creation. When we are raised from baptism, we are a new creation. We are one people. We're not Protestant. We're not Catholic. We're not Jew, we're not Gentile, we're not male, we're not female, we're not slave, we're not free. We're not a denomination. We are one in Christ Jesus. For those who have been baptized into Christ, clothe yourselves with Christ. Our identity is in Christ. If we are going to soar in the way that God wants us to soar, we will release our personal preferences. There's so much to say. But that may be enough for this morning. I'm going to invite you to do this, though. And I've been praying about this myself. I'm going to invite you during this time of invitation and those who will be closing us, I invite you to come forward. And I promise you this is not something that this is the pastor, preacher, teacher speaking to mere listeners. I've been wrestling with some things in my own life. We all are. There's not a person in this room who is not wrestling with something. And if you're not wrestling with something you need to let go of, ask God to show you something. Because we are constantly in the process of growing and developing and becoming. And life is a process of releasing some things. We all have our particulars. But this is what I would invite you to do as we sing our hymn of invitation. Ask Christ the light of the world if there's something that you've been clinging to, something that you've been attached to. It was interesting. I read, and I don't always, but I have an app on my iPad, and it's Matthew Henry's commentary. Some of you probably have that. It's one that is a long, that I don't often um, consult. But he described it as that darling sin. That darling sin. That one that we love so much. Let's invite Christ, the light of the world, to show us perhaps a darling sin but something that we've been holding on to. And let us recognize that God will convict us, not condemn us. God is not trying to condemn us. God is trying to set us free from anything that would hold us back. Is there anything, and this is my prayer for me, is there anything that's preventing me from being a better father? Is there anything that's preventing me from being a better spouse? Is there anything that's preventing me from being a better minister? Is there anything that's preventing me from being a better son? Is there anything that's preventing me from being the presence of God that God desires for each and every follower of God. Now, one more thing. Thank you, Coach, because you could have pointed to your watch. I invited you to do it. But this is a word, too. For some of us, I just recognize it because it is to me, too. Sometimes we are attached to the results. We're trying to control the results. I'm guilty of it. Let us release our need to produce certain results, to control the outcome. Let us trust God with our lives and let God take care of the outcome. How many have ever experienced you need to control the outcome? God, if I take this step, where is it going to lead me? God, if we go this way, where is it going to lead? That's not our business. That's God's business. So let's release the need to control the outcome. I invite you to stand as you're able. There may be someone here who has not made a confession of faith. Jesus really is the Christ, the Lord, the Savior, the Teacher, the all in all, the one who discloses who God is. The only regret you'll have is that you didn't answer that call sooner. If you're not a member of a community of faith, is this not an extraordinary community of faith? 
Is this not a church on the move? Is this not a church making a difference in personal lives and in the lives of Washington, North Carolina? And we're just getting started. So come on in where we're getting started if you're not a member of a community of faith. Each one of us has an opportunity to invite God to show us what we need to release and let God empower us to do so. I invite you to respond as God is calling you to respond. God that surpasses all understanding, the love of God that has brought us here this morning, the love of God that will never, ever let us go. May that love guard and sustain our hearts this day and forevermore. Amen.